too loud, too loud. And now, it's time for the Freedom Fiends Agenda live call-in show. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Call in before they get droned. Right now, live on Freedom Fiends Radio. That's too quiet, Nima. (laughs) We'll figure this out one of these days. What's up, Nima Fiend? Freedom Fiends. Fiends. What's up, man? Yeah. Was it too loud, man? It, it the was, mumble was, statistic was showing mumble statistics was showing me visually that it was fine. But did yeah, it sound yeah. distorted? I still got the, I echo, still got the too. echo too. Yeah, yeah. Did it sound distorted? Uh, no. It just was really loud. It was like three times louder than us talking right now, which is uh, yeah. okay. pretty cool. But live and learn, you know. Live and learn. I guess. How's Nima? We're live. Wake up, little okay. man. Okay. Act alive. Act alive. There's people listening. Alive. There's people listening, and we are on the Liberty Mission. We're here to spread liberty. And, uh, you know, I had an experience today of realizing that the Freedom Fiends deserve a Nobel Peace Prize because we are creating peace in the Middle East. How so? Well, I noticed on the Fiends Torrent server that um, one of the torrents was getting downloaded from both Israel and the United Arab Emirates at the same time. So nice. we do what no government can do. We bring... Israel and the Arabs together, the Arabs <laughs> together. Is it okay to call them the Arabs? Can you say that? I don't know what people from the United Arab Emirates are called. It's not Saudi Arabia. It's a different place, right? Well, they have it in their name, so I don't <coughs> see why they wouldn't want to be called Arabs. I mean, they're the United Arab Emirates, the mm-hmm. Emirates of Arabs that are united. I so, think it's how you yeah. say it. Like, you know, if you say the Arabs, you know, kind of like on 30 Rock, where where Jack says to his girlfriend, what do you call yourself? And she's like, Puerto Rican. And he's like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then later- As long as you don't like, say A-Rabs, I think you're okay. <laughs> I did, but I was kidding. Yeah. Yep. It's um, like, um, you know. And it wasn't, it wasn't a Freedom Fiends archive. It was on our feed. It was actually the Hubert Selby movie DVD ISO. But I have separately seen people from Iran and uh, the United Arab Emirates, or from Israel and the United Arab Emirates, downloading fiend stuff, but not at the same time, not like joining hands and probably like (laughs) seating off, you know, like touching each other's computers probably. So yeah, and you know, Hubert Selby, the guy that movie's about, in the interview I did with him, this part's not in the movie, but it's in the DVD extras in the audio interview, the audio Mm -hmm. portion of the the whole interview. Mm -hmm. Um, He said that the Cold War wasn't ended by politicians or diplomats. He said... Uh, you know, he's talking about how they used to have this like exchange program of ballet dancers during the Cold War. And he said, and I'm trying to do his Brooklyn accent, but won't do it justice. He said something like, yeah, man, all you need, all you need is a couple of dancers going back and forth from Moscow to New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, people can do what governments can't do in general when it comes to cooperation uh, because governments can't really cooperate in a net positive kind of a light because when governments are cooperating they're doing it in buildings funded with stolen money and through telecommunication services paid for with stolen money uh, they never can really do anything with the net positive uh, whereas people uh, invest their own time effort and money to buy their own computers and to buy their uh, and, and to download their own BitTorrent clients and things like that and and to make their own Facebook profiles you know we're not the only example of people uh, in countries where the governments pretend like they're warring but the people don't want any part of it I mean they look at the Israel loves Iran Facebook page or the Iran loves Israel Facebook page. I actually page. posted the blog post I did about the fiends creating peace in the Middle East through torrenting on both those pages today with two yeah. things one is i'm pretty sure that that uh, you're probably too young to remember that there was like this exchange program of ball- ballerinas going and dancing for crowds from new york to moscow in nice. the 70s and uh i don't think it was sponsored by governments i think it was sponsored by the new york metropolitan opera actually nice. and i mean i'm sure they well, had I always to go wondered that though government. are are things like operas and like the Austin Ballet, are those all for profit? Uh, you know, they make their money off of donations and ticket sales uh, kind of thing? It's generally kind of mixed. I mean, it's yeah. ostensibly private, but then, you know, 
the, the city the will build the stadium, or not stadium, but the, the, the auditorium. The, the ballet stadium. I've got tickets for the <laughs> ballet. Want to go, baby? My team is playing. My Houston's playing Moscow tonight. You want to you know, go to the ballet game? Full contact ballet is nothing to laugh at. That'd be pretty I dope. Know. I would pay to watch that. It'd be like American Gladiators meets Billy Elliot or something. Well, you know, those Russian male ballet, I don't think they're ballerinas, but the male ballet, ballets, I don't know what you call them, but they didn't Mallets. look fruity at all, man. They looked like snipers. They probably were. I mean, they were like, what was the guy's name? Mikhail. I don't know. He was actually on Sex in the City as one of the boy toys at some point. But Rishnikov, was yeah. that the dude? Yeah, he was one of them ah. in that exchange program. Yeah, ah. and the other the other thing I was going to say is when you started saying people with their own Facebook pages and BitTorrent, I was, what was it you said before the show about uh, you said you joined Ben Stone's, Ben Quaker's, Bad Quaker's uh, Yeah, I joined, I joined his forum. You're like, did you have to pay for that? Did he give it to you for free? Well, he has a advanced version, and I'm like, you know, I mean, really, he should give... And then a free pay, a free unpaid version, and an advanced paid version that doesn't cost much. And I think you should you, give some you, rock you, you stars like, like you. You were like, I should set, I should help Ben set up a chat room. And I'm like, yeah, you can set up a <laughs> chat room for his forum, for his forum about his blog, about his podcast. Yeah, uh, I think you're, you're going a little too far there. I know it was pretty funny. And then I said, well, <laughs> I'm going to finger bang you on you face, but uh, finger tag you, finger bang baby back into my life. Yeah, girl, yeah. you like to finger bang, and that's all right. Yeah, there's too many things on the internet, but you know, yeah, uh, all the things. people should go join our Twitter page. My Twitter page, actually, yours is. You don't do anything on there. Mine is active, and I, uh, I post regularly on Twitter. And there's like two guys. One is named Roth Barty, and I don't know what his real name is, but he re reposts everything I post on there that's good. And uh, you know, everything I post is just our stuff, pretty much. I don't care about what other people in the world think. But everybody should go add me. Follow me on Twitter. I'll follow you back. And uh, don't write to me on there. I hate messaging people on there. You can just email me or call <laughs> me. But um, people should be on there sharing our stuff. People should go on iTunes and review us. People should go on Amazon and review us. And if you're active on Reddit, go on there and post about us on Reddit because I, I'm i getting like attacked by some dude for a, who's trying to like call me a spammer because all I do is my own stuff. But I post stuff that people give like 40 likes to because it's useful, like, you know, the PGP. Reddit is just another content distribution forum for you. Yeah, but apparently they don't like you distributing your own content no matter how good it is and how much people like it. Uh, there's people on there who go who report you to the self-spammer board. So other people should go self-spam me on and us on there. Yeah, get one of the many fiends who love us to do it. There's your solution. Yeah, there's at least 11 yeah. of them. I can see them on the uh, chat room here <laughs> um, on, the, on the streaming server. So, yeah, man, what's, go what's yeah. going on? Uh, I don't know. Uh, things, things, very bad things for liberty. Uh, very bad tyranny really? today. I just wanted to talk about good yeah. stuff, but you go All ahead. Right, well, no, screw it. We'll talk about good stuff. What kind of good stuff do you have? Uh, you, uh, I, did, I did a blog post on how to remove the ads from uTorrent. uTorrent now has ads when you update it, and, and the update's worth doing because yeah. it's good, but... You start getting ads and they try to upsell you and all this stuff. And uh, I did a blog post on the Fiends blog, freedomfiends.com slash blog on how to Also, you that. got the the PGP encryption of your email up and running. You did a blog post tutorial about that as well. That's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, me and three or four, me and four other guys did that. Two of them wrote <laughs> it. I helped write the intro and I helped check all the screenshots. And I yeah. finally how got to work. How many nerds does it take to do a blog post about exactly. PGP encryption? It takes five writing by unencrypted email to each other because we didn't all have it set up yet. But yeah, I got it working today. Uh, it's a so how does that work? Did you have to email each other through unencrypted email, the PGP keys and stuff like that? <laughs> no, you can put your PGP keys on a public website. My uh, Three of ours are actually posted at the end of that blog post, although mine's the only one that has my email address. And actually, my main email address, I'm not doing encrypted email on. I set up a special email address for it. It's something like mwd dash at libertarianpunk.com, but you'll have to go actually see how many H's are in there if you want to write me. So um, if, if Mr. Government NSA agent can steal an email of yours and then he can just go to the public site and grab your PGP key? That's or? not how it works. How does it work? Would you like to know how it works? Um, I would. There's, there's two keys. One is the public one and one is the private one. And you use both of them when you send an email. Mm -hmm. And someone uses yours 
public one only when they send you an email. And then you have both of them on your end so you can decrypt the email they send you. Mm, okay. um, basically, the two numbers are uh, hashed. What hashed means like, you know, turned into letters and numbers. You know, it's just a big block mm -hmm. of text. Um, mm -hmm. They are hashed numbers that the unencrypt the unhashed numbers multiplied together uh form a giant prime number so basically mm. the two ends of it are square roots of some random uh number so okay and and there's it's it sounds pretty simple but there's actually like almost or or no way it hasn't been cracked yet that we know of by any government yeah yeah well if the government did crack it, would they let people? I don't know if they'd make that information public, would they? Uh, the only way we'd know is if they arrested somebody based on something ah, that they did. And more right. often, what they do is they sneak into your house and put a keylogger on so they can see your passphrase, or they, yeah. you know, sneak in and uh, or send you something that says like, "Hey, check out my Liberty Media in this uh, XM in in this data file in this uh, spreadsheet," and you know, you mm -hmm. think it's something you want and you open it and it puts a key logger in or something like that. But, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't suffer that kind of stuff. I don't do that kind of crap. Yeah. 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 Good um, times. Good times. Yeah. I, I or would they, like to I mean, uh, get into it. We know it, we know it works because no one's been arrested yet based on anything that's been, I mean, really, do you think the government would go, okay, we have figured out how to do this, how to crack these easily. And there's all these crimes going on that we want to bust people for that we think are crimes, and we're just going to not do it. Mm, no, you know, hell no, hell no, no. They bust anybody and any been, chance they get. Yeah, and it's been going for twenty years. And basically, one of the theories about that data site they're building in Utah is that it's to store everyone's e email until computers can get strong enough that they actually can crack them. But if ah, they crack them, uh -huh. it's still going to take hours or days or weeks to crack one email key. Um, and the they would still have is, to selectively choose who to crack, when to crack it, etc. Right. So the idea is get as many people as possible using it, even when they're uh, just talking about the weather uh -huh. and their cats. Right. You know. Right. Right. Yeah, then no. they'll have they'll have so much data; it'll be harder and harder. The harder yeah. it is for them to sift through it, the less likely they are to be yeah. successful at pursuing the amount of tyranny they'd like to pursue. Right. If only people mm -hmm. that would be of interest to them use it. Then they just go after those people, and it's like finding a needle in a big, cleanly, uh, you know, nice, in a big, clean room. brightly lit clean yeah. room. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, if everyone's using it, it's more like finding a needle in a warehouse of, of haystacks. <laughs> That's what I wrote. That, that was my contribution. Warehouse of haystacks. That was my yeah. contribution to the blog post. Was, was, actually, was, was that line was nice. the best line, but a few <laughs> other things like that. Yeah, and okay. you know, okay. the other thing is, you don't want to wait until things get bad to use this. Uh -huh. It's kind of like having a gun. And I put this in the blog post too. You know, people, I've heard people say, well, when the shit hits the fan, I'll go get a gun. And it's like, when the shit hits the fan, you aren't going to be able to get a gun and you aren't going to be able to go out and learn to use it. Uh, you should get it now and learn to use it and quietly have it and practice using it quietly. You know, when the shit hits, get, when they get to the point of like everyone who's using encrypted email is suspect and, and or outlawing using encryption, like they've done in some Middle Eastern countries in China, uh, then you don't want to be using it. You want to be using it and like know how mm -hmm. to hide it and P and, and, and yep. you know, VPN it and do all sorts of things with it. And by the time it's, uh, you want it to be second nature by the time it's a problem. Right. Right. Yeah. You don't go out on a hike into the desert and try to find water. You drink yeah. lots of water and stay hydrated before you go on the hike. Yeah. You don't, you don't go on a 40 day hike of the desert and, uh, learn to camp. Yeah. You know, exactly. you train, go out to the woods train, and maybe. when it's nice weather and spend a night not far from society in case you need to get back and it doesn't work out. You try that the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Worms. So mm. I was thinking of mm, worms. I was thinking we should change the name of the torrent club to the seed, bo the seed box project, the seed box kids, the seed box kids. I like that. Voslav is going to turn the fiends.cz site into a torrent box over Christmas. Ooh, he's going to delete present to the fiends. Yeah, he's going to delete everything nice. that's on there because we'll need the room to do it. But it's kind of not uh, it. Basically, we set it up because we thought it was drone proof. But the recent seizures by U.S. Uh, whatever Department of Fed. Well, they're, they're Cyber Monday. Uh, 
shutdown spree. Yeah, they were able yeah. to like send requests to Czech Republic and get stuff removed. So we thought mm -hmm. it was since the .cz domain isn't hosted by ICANN, I think is the acronym for the United States government controlled .com, .net, .org uh, registering service or database. Uh, we thought CZ was outside of their purview, but apparently it's mm -hmm. not. So, but right. BitTorrent is out of their purview, and we said it before. We'll say it again. It's like, uh, you know, Will Coley told me today that when I posted that thing on uh, Muslims for Liberty, when I posted the fiends are spreading peace in the Middle East thing, uh, he said that one in Israel is probably working for Camera, and you'll get drunk, you'll get a cease and desist from the U.S. Feds next week. I had to look up Camera. Do you know what it is? No. What's that? Uh, let me look it up. It's, <laughs> it's funny if you search. I had to look it up and then I forgot what it was. <laughs> Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting in America. Oh, it sounds yeah. like uh, an APAC think tank. And it's, yeah, it probably is. And it's like uh, camera, like we are watching what you do. Ah, uh, yeah. Gross. Gross. What's a, APAC is APAC? Uh, AIPAC. American Israeli Political Action Committee or some, something um, like that. I'm just searching through the camera page on Wikipedia. That APAC comes up about 15 times on this page. Ah. I, don't, I don't need to read it. They're connected. <laughs> yeah. I doubt it okay. says APAC is adamantly opposed to camera 15 times. You know, it's probably the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or they could be calling out any uh, media outlets that are calling APAC out. And that's what probably. it is. Probably. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the thug. It's the, the thug, the thug tank for APAC. The thug tank. <laughs> the goon tank. Yeah. Yeah. The goon tank. <clears throat> screw yeah. them all, man. But screw uh, Will, Cole, Will, Coley, <laughs> Will Coley said, uh, you know, that, that whoever was touring in Israel, their, their web service provider, because it was like triple C web provider or something like that. And he was like, camera, camera, camera. You know, um, he said, he said, they'll probably get you, you know, ceased and desist. And I said, that's the beauty of Torrance, man. They could drone yep. me and it would not cease. You know, it's distributed. <laughs> oh, speaking Lives of which, forever. Yeah, yeah. I, speaking of which, go ahead. Speaking you of which, somebody away. somebody put up a torrent. Actually, not a torrent. A magnet link, which is smaller than a torrent. Of all the magnet links listed, of everything listed on Pirate Bay, basically, oh, yeah. basically, you can download this thing. It's 160 megs, and it's everything. You can download everything on Pirate Bay from it, even if Pirate Bay got droned. Literally, literally all the torrents like that lady with her broom and the blonde hair literally Down, all download the all torrents. the torrents yeah. who's the yeah. lady in the broom what's that oh crap you still there yeah what's the lady with the broom oh. uh, a little cartoon that says all the things she has a didn't she have a broom oh, i thought it was a man a moon-faced man no it's a chick it's a chick it's from a blog called hyperbole and a half and she goes uh clean all the things uh um, uh, you know, she's saying sometimes she's motivated and sometimes she's not. Yeah, and clean well, all the things is uh is her motivated periods. I'm not gonna link. Periods. I'm not gonna link that because that'll get us droned. But um, I don't know, man. The lady who runs the blog has not been. No, 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 to not like that. I'm talking about the torrent of the magnet oh. links where you can download everything. Uh, 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 but if you search the phrase "download a copy of pirate," download a copy of the Pirate Bay. Uh, it's only ninety megs. I guess it's been updated <laughs> since then. The article said 164 megs. But yeah, search, download a copy of the Pirate Bay. It's only 90 megs. And I really like to comment on I this thought, I thought it was more than 90 megs. I thought it was like 164. It's 164. I think that yeah. they named the article and then updated it a few years later uh, uh, when okay. Pirate Bay got bigger. So, yeah. Um, but I really liked what they said. What's perhaps most striking, what's perhaps most striking is that the greatest archive the the greatest arch rival of a billion dollar entertainment industry is nothing more than 164 megabytes of text. Something to wow. think about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing stuff, man. Amazing stuff. Yep. So, um, speaking of the Middle East, uh, did you know that the U that in 2001 Iraq stopped stopped trading oil in U.S. dollars and went to euros or opened it up to euros? Yes. And then the U.S. after the U.S. invaded Ira Iraq. Iraq went back to dollars. So Syria has stopped taking dollars for oil or opened it up to to where it's you know that's a tertiary currency. They're taking gold. And the US is saying there are that Syria is about to use and this is the term Hillary Clinton used, weapons of mass destruction on their own people. I'm like, "Really? 
Like they're like, well, that worked once before. <laughs> I think it's a lie. I don't think they're going to drop sarin gas on their people. Well, I haven't seen it seen it confirmed anywhere else. Um, you know, Unna- I did a unnamed, little bit of checking unnamed, around. Unnamed government employee. And yes, said. it was nothing but an unnamed government employee. So <laughs> Bill, at is- po- Bill at the post office said. <laughs> My mailman what? says they're going to drop nerve gas. Yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. one of the things I always found very sad about working in the mainstream media and reading the mainstream media is random official says something. Uh, even if the reporter is more nuanced than that and the actual text is more nuanced than that, which this really isn't. But even if they are, the headline always has to be reduced to the the thing as if it were a fact. Like this – I think the headline on the NBC story is Syria readying uh, – chemical weapons not not unnamed u.s official tells reporter that syria is ready in chemical weapons they leave out the unnamed u.s official tells reporter part you know in the headline i like what someone someone just said ironic that the best u.s news source is russia today actually it is (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, i i mean i'm a fan of russia today but i don't really watch it i i see the clips on on youtube and stuff but man it's so nice to not be stuck to a tv I guess why did it. they uh why they fire Adam Kokesh? Oh, because he backed Ron Paul and they didn't want him to back any politician. I don't something. know if it's as simple as the, all that either. Like that was what Kokesh, we heard. Kokesh yeah. won't say what it is, and he says it wasn't that. Um, I don't uh, know what it is, man. Okay, well, it was over technical differences, probably. Yeah, could have been. Could've you been. know, when bands break up, they always say it's over musical differences, but it's usually really over. That's code for like money and drugs. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the mm-hmm. singer didn't do the same drugs as the rest of the band and they didn't like each other. <laughs> and the singer, you know, was taking the majority of the songwriting credit. So he was living in a mansion while the rest of them were living in their like 20 year old Mitsubishi Volvo or something. Yeah. yeah. Mitsubishi <laughs> Volvo. Mitsubishi so, Volvo. Um, so, but yeah, Syria, uh, actually U S troops, uh, have started arriving near the shore, I guess. Although, uh, you know, from RT's report, the USS Eisenhower is approaching. Um, but then again, I mean, American naval battle groups and troops are sort of always in the Mediterranean and the Persian Gulf. I'm, I'm guessing since it's Syria, they must be in the Mediterranean because that's where Syria's ports are. Um, so I don't know how close they've gotten to the Syrian shore. But Somebody uh, was worried about a draft from things that are going on. Some young young guy posted today on my Facebook like, Man, if they have a draft, do you have any ideas for the, how people get out of it? Just for you know, discussion's sake. And I said, uh, "Be old." That's what I do. <laughs> be old. I mean, I don't know. I guess you could do conscientious objector status would be the easiest legal way to get out of actually killing somebody. Yeah, but, but you know uh, what? To do that, you, st- you still support the war machine. You and, just do it at home. Yeah. And, or you do it there and you're like, you know, carrying stuff for the Fi- medics filing or something. papers. Yeah, yeah. You're getting shot at and don't get to have a gun to defend yourself. Is Ugh, what that means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, like the, the, the doctors on mash, you know, <sighs> I, I don't I think guess... they're conscientious objectors, but I mean, they, if you're a doctor, they're not going to put you in combat. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I would say ex- expatriate guns. or, Make yourself scarce somehow. No, that's what, what drones are for, man. Drones are for to bomb you if you... You think the drones are going to find no, people who dodge the draft this time around? Do you think it's illegal giving... You just basically gave advice on breaking a law that isn't a law yet. Is that legal? Well... Legal is what I, they I, say I, it is. The, the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, I Legal's said do it in a legal is. way. I, I, I said do it in a legal way the first time, and I, and I was very vague the second time. I said I said expatriate, which you could do. Uh, I think you could legally expatriate before, you know, as they announced the draft, before you were subject to it. Uh, and then I said make yourself scarce, which that's vague enough to, who knows what that means. So, so the only the I don't really know enough about the petrodollar and things like that to say anything more than we have. I mean that's Scott Horton's purview, and I'm just no, he does, like an idiot. He, Scott Horton wonders about it too. He he says, well, if it's all about you know propping the dollar up and keeping the dollar as the world's reserve currency, I mean, going to war hurts hurts the dollar tremendously anyway. Like printing all the money, borrowing all the money to invade Iraq. Did that really – was that a net gain uh, in the eyes or for the government You know, as far as keeping Iraq in line? I mean you spend trillion or more dollars fighting war. 
uh, I guess I guess what's the point of doing that just to keep Iraq on the dollar standard? As is Some, what Scott Horton said about it. Somebody just in the chat room just quoted uh, said, "Sing a couple bars of Alice's Restaurant and walk out." Now let me know. Do you know what that means, Nima? I do. Yeah, yeah, I know Alice's Restaurant. Okay, and uh, then I put and then I put veins in my teeth and eat dead, burnt bodies. And then I was going to put, "I want to kill," which is the next line in the song. But then I thought, you know, they'll drone you for that these days. <laughs> you know, well, only we tell you who to kill. Only we kill. All I really remember is, uh, like, he had like a littering. He had some kind of ridiculous ticket, and he's in- getting interviewed by the the army or whatever. And the army says he doesn't have the high the, enough of a moral upstanding standard to be in the army because he's a litter he bug. Because ki- he got some kind yeah. of little littering ticket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they weren't uh, sure. They wanted to ask him, and then he started saying, I want to kill. I want to kill. I want to have veins in my teeth and eat dead, burnt bodies. I want to kill. Really? <laughs> and then they then they said he wasn't moral enough to join the army. Yeah. Okay. I like veins in my teeth, man. What an mm, image. Yummy. Yeah, those hippies got it right sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But then, um, they, but then they put all their trust in the government. It's like the 60s were all about, like, Let's take LSD and we don't want to die in your war or any war. So how do you get from a, you know, a, hating a government that wants to make you kill people you've never met and wants to put you in jail for smoking weed? How do you get to 40 years later, those same people going, Obama is wonderful. That's, you know, Obama is the I don't end, know, man. It's, Obama's it's your the generation. You, you tell hey, me. I, no, I was, dude, I was born in 64. I was, I was oh, six okay. when the seven. Well, you're closer. Over. You're closer to it, man. My, my sisters were there and they are Obama humpers and they were anti-war people and experimented with things in the 60s. I, I, so. I, my only explanation is people are stupid and lazy and they see Obama and all they, all they think about and all they hear on TV is, He's black and he's not George Bush. And he really so he's the he, he end must game not be a, he must not be a warmonger because he's not George Bush and he's a Democrat and he's black. Yay. Michael is killing me, Rothbardian in sixteen twenty seven said. I think that's the one guy that re retweets us, that twats us. Thank twats you, us. Rothbardian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um the only thing else I have to say about Syria, because I'm really not a worldly knowledgeable person, but the family that runs Syria, um, and I posted a picture of them, they look like contestants on some weird reality show where Persian Euro trash have to act like it's the 80s. <laughs> and I know they're Arab, not Persian, but uh, they really, don't they kind of look that way? They do. They do. Like, uh, well, I guess they'd be closer to, they're close-ish to Persian-ish because they're Shiites. They, they preside over, they're a minority that presides over the Sunni majority in Syria. Um I would like to explore the petrodollar a little bit. Maybe it's good that we don't know a whole lot about it. I'd rather explore explore heroin brand names because I know more about that. Well, here's the thing. Um, Iran is sanctioned so hardcore by the U.S. sanctions, which have been, you know, re-upped and uh, strengthened and voted yes on by Rand Paul, the douchebag, who is nowhere near as good as his dad. Um so the sanctions basically say Iran can't sell any oil, or no Western country can buy pretty much anything from Iran. Um, they dollars sell it to China, or, and then China or, or sells else, it to, to the West. Yeah, yeah, dollars or or they otherwise. They wash it. They wash it. They money <laughs> launder their oil. So, so maybe it's like a kindergarten thing. Like, well, you just can't sell anything then. You know, if you're not going to sell for our, uh, if you're not going to give in, it in our, our system, to, if you don't give the teacher a cookie. But I, I think what it points out is is that it's more about uh, control and he- hegemony than any kind of monetary thing. That the, the petrodollar, I believe, does exist, and, and that kind of theory is is somewhat accurate. But I don't think the motivation is to keep the dollar dominant and high necessarily. I think the motivation yeah. is to keep the U.S. imperial uh, power and, and military might uh, the dominant force in the world. Yeah. All right. So it's not about uh, economics; it's about military. Is is my my two cents. So let's talk about the heroin in the free market. The heroines in the free market. Did you see that? Did you see that <laughs> oh, picture? Yeah. Oh, I just yeah. posted a picture. It's a it's a picture of 1990s New York City heroin little glass lean bags with uh, things silk screened on them with brand names. And uh, well, that's a good amazing. point to bring up to bring up. Uh, my wording of not saying free market, but just saying market, right? Because there, there was no free market in heroin in New York, was there? You no. Wouldn't, you wouldn't call it a free market. It was controlled by the war on, or 
the war on drugs was imposing its violence on the market. But uh, these things, and maybe you should put it in the show notes or on the chat room, uh, these things obviously came from the market, right? Like Scarface, Most Wanted, Empire, what is that, Blood Money, Little Flags. Great that, names, man. Yeah, Venom. Would they put these like around I like, the bag? I like or, or I like. I like loyalty. Like you will be loyal to ah, our product. Yes, to our um, heroin. Yeah. Would they put them on the bag? No, these are the bags. Oh, these are the bags. They're yeah, like, this is. They're like cloth or paper. They or look what? like cloth, but no, I think they're glassoline. This actually might be cloth. This is from an art exhibit, <clears throat> probably yeah. funded by government money from the National Endowment of the Arts. But uh, I don't know where it was. But someone sent me this. It was from an art exhibit in New York, and yeah. It's a uh, mega rush is one of them. <sighs> and this might be like they copied them and then silk screened them on fabric. It kind of looks like fabric, but I, I've, I actually yeah. bought dope in New York city once it was generic. It didn't have one of these on it, but it, uh, it was a little glassoline envelope, like the stuff that stamp collectors put stamps in, but really small, like, you know, inch by an inch or mm -hmm. inch by mm -hmm. half an inch. Uh, that has, you know, like 10 bucks or 20 bucks worth of heroin in it, you know, like yeah. about but, but, half but the what? size of a pea. What it shows me is that since they're labeling and advertising and trying to be eye catching and it, it it proves that they were voluntarily or they were trying to get that voluntary transaction yeah. from the junkie, from the heroin addict. Like a heroin had, addict had a choice. Uh, should I buy Scarface today or murder? <laughs> and somebody somebody I posted this on Facebook and Mike my friend Micah said, and here I thought heroin was all just heroin. I'm such a noob. And I said, In San Francisco, <laughs> in San Francisco it's all generic. You just want the dope from Flacco or the dope from Jesus or the dope from Hector. But brand names evolve in any in industry. If you've got a good product, yeah. you want people to remember it and ask for it by right, name. Right. And you know, I invented a fake heroin New York City brand name in my first novel for one of the characters. Oh uh, nice. Toe nice. tag. Toe tag. <laughs> That well, would it, be a, a New York City name. I mean, they're all like the, this will kill you kind of names, you know. Most yeah. wanted. No one is yeah. no pain, and it's got a coffin on it with a cross. Nice. And one's nice. called murder. One's called venom, and has a scorpion. Right. I'm right. gonna use this as the uh, image today. I think for, I don't know. It's too well, weird. People well, won't well, know what it is. Yeah. It seems like what they were selling or what the idea was, you know, when, when people talk about Whole Foods, they say, oh, well, they're selling you a narrative of where the food came from and how it's flowering yeah. and organic. Yeah. It looks like this, what they were selling you is, is self-abuse. People self died for this. People died for your product. You they, they, were selling, they were selling you self-destruction, right? I mean, you're like, oh, I hate my life. Yeah. I'm going to take care of it. Kind of I need some blood money. I need some venom. Yeah. I need some, some murder, murder, murder. Yeah, yeah. lean on, lean on is funny. Cause when you're people are high on heroin, they tend to like lean on the walls, lean on <laughs> loyalty. Lean on you'll me. be loyalty. There should be one called you'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they remind me of microbrew labels on beers is what they remind <laughs> me of. Red tick ale. Yeah. <laughs> Simpsons. <laughs> Well, there's there's dead man IPA and all that kind of stuff. So what's IPA? Uh, India Pale Ale. It's very hoppy, hoppy beer. Like hops are the star. International perverts of America. <laughs> Ooh, someone in the Bahamas is downloading Guns and Weed on our torrent server. Nice. Yeah. Nice. nice. Way to go, yep. Bahamas. Yeah, they're they're all away from it, man. They're they're in paradise it doesn't matter if it's libertarian paradise or not like at least they're in paradise they can listen to the fiends and laugh ha ha ha, ha. those silly americans <laughs> in their american state police well, someone state. in australia was downloading the gun training dvd and i'm like god you can barely even have guns there it's one of those like <laughs> yeah you can have a revolver if you keep it in a safe and get you know join a gun club and pay a huge thousand dollar tax and allow the police to come in your home at any time and search it yeah yeah <laughs> It's ridiculous. Well, did you see um, Pierce Morgan's fa uh, famous tweet uh, back and forth uh, About what? over a couple days ago? Uh, Pierce Morgan, the British uh, transplant, I guess he's now an American citizen or he's some kind of legal resident of America now. But he he replaced Larry King. He's got his own show yeah, now I know on who CNN. He is. And he's horrible. He's on, he's ho yeah. 
horrible on everything, especially gun control. He tweeted something like, um, uh, the Second Amendment was written with muskets in mind, um, or, and something to that effect. Not, not high-powered magazines or high-capacity magazines. And uh, some girl was like, no, it was written so that the average person could have the same weapons as anybody else who may attack them. And muskets just happened to be the, the only weapon people had at the time. So I can have the same weapon as the government troops. And uh, Piers Morgan comes back and he says, where exactly in the Constitution does it say that? And she goes, right next to where it says muskets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a pretty common gun grabber thing of, well, yeah, it, it made is. sense then, but it doesn't now. And uh, the reply I've heard is, I'll, I'll go back to carrying nothing but a musket, a brace of muskets, which means, or two, two abrasive blunderbusses. As soon as the New York, as soon as the New York Times goes back to publishing on hand cranked printing presses and yep. delivering only by horse. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, they're both there. They're both the top two amendments, man. So, yeah. If, if you're going to put those kind of silly historical arbitrary distinctions hysterical. on one. Hysterical distinctions. Yeah, they are hysterical, aren't they? Uh, but blunderbusses are badass. How come nobody makes a modern blunderbuss? I don't know, but you know, um, Cody put up a new video. about. Uh, he did a test of a printable, supposedly, gun. I'm kind of disappointed with how the press handled it. I, I saw this headline that said, like, video of printable gun people testing their pr first printable weapon. And I was like, and I looked at it, and it was like, you know, it had a link to defense distributed. I'm like, holy crap, he did it, man. Cody did it. And then I looked was, at it. Was that I, Cody's group? I, I didn't know that was Cody's and I, group. He well, wasn't mentioned in it. It was linked to dis defense distributed. And I looked at the video and I sort of know what he looks like. And I didn't see him in it. But here's here's what's gr slightly groundbreaking about that, but not really. Um, Is that the one with the AR-15 and, and what, the, what the printed part was just the lower? And they yeah. shoot like six rounds? Yeah, but the thing is... Apparently, the guy who first who designed that and put the design up downloadable and said, yes, I fired 200 rounds through it. No problem. He didn't videotape it. He just said, take my word for it. I think that's uh, what I heard. I never saw uh -huh. it. Um, but whoever made this video actually tested it and showed them firing it. It fired six shots and then fell apart. And they were firing like uh, something smaller than 223 from it I like, don't know what like it was. 22 i mean uh, somewhere between, between. i think they were 22. i think they were firing what an ak-74 fires i think they chambered it for that which is like the uh 5.56 like five, five, yeah it's like the ak-223 but smaller i don't know but um anyway but they were firing it from the shoulder with it up against their face you know looking through the i mean that's ridiculous if i were going to test fire a you know, weirdly made gun. I'd put it in a vice, you know, with like some fabric around it. So the device doesn't hurt it. And then I'd tie a string to the trigger and I'd be about 40 feet away behind a rock fire, pulling the string first time, you know, yes, yes. set the camera up there. Cameras are expendable. Your face and head isn't Monday but, morning marksman. eh, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I would have done it this way. Why well, don't you print a gun then? <laughs> no, no, but no. I have given advice to Cody and the advice I gave him was basically make a blunderbuss and use that as a proof of concept or a zip gun and work up from there. You know, yeah. basically what I said was make a block of this stuff that has a hole down the middle and figure a printable way to make something to hit it. And I don't even know if you could do it without having some extra parts because I don't think there's anything you could make out of plastic, of printable plastic that would be able to make a primer go off when you hit it. Well, why does it have to be completely printable parts? I, I don't see why that's well, a, I mean, a restriction. If, I mean, you know, I would say if there are some commonly available parts, I mean, but right. the thing is like literally people make zip guns out of, uh, you know, and I'm not saying how to do anything because I've only looked at the schematics in passing, but it's like, uh, you know, a pen barrel, a nail, and a rubber band, and you can make a zip gun that'll fire a twenty two. Yeah. Right, right. Um, well, I, I guess the regulations are weird and not ca and haven't caught up to modern technology. Um, haven't stopped and, it yet, and they're working furiously <laughs> three shifts right. to figure it out. Right, but I'm wondering, uh, could some clever entrepreneur um, figure out a combination of printable stuff and smaller parts that wouldn't be classified as uh, gun parts 
necessarily or exclusively and, well, and sell you sell you like a download and a packet of the parts like just a little plastic bag no, with extra little parts no but let me ask you this i mean no I mean, why not uh, why would they have to sell it i mean why not make it so you do it yourself i think that's cody's idea cody's not yeah. going to be selling guns or gun parts through the mail okay okay I'm i mean saying the thing there, there is could like be some middle ground here is is, is what i'm saying there, there's well so much opportunity I mean, the way laws work, they're so stacked against anything moral. I mean, yeah. ma making a zip gun is illegal, and possession of a zip gun is illegal, but possession of the parts of it aren't, unless they can prove you have intent to manufacture it. But, you know, a pen, a rubber band, and a nail, and a twenty two bullet are not mm. illegal to own in America. So, so, yeah, you're, you're right, I guess, in the, in the sense that the government likes to go after people who are selling things more so than not. Uh, for instance, um, Tommy Chong got arrested for selling bongs, didn't he? Tommy I mean, Chong's what, what bongs. That... Yeah, and they yeah. totally set him up. They uh, basically at that time. Have you seen his movie? It's uh, distributed by the, MVD. The, the same documentary. People, yeah, same yeah, people who do our stuff. I mean, basically, he was selling water pipes that were said for tobacco use only, but they're the kind that are commonly used for marijuana, and he was selling them. And there were like five states he wouldn't ship to because you know in most states that is legal if you call it a tobacco pipe and there's four or five states where it's illegal and the feds wanted to make an example of him so bad and some uh federal attorney lady who wanted to make a name for herself target had a whole team targeting that one guy because he used to be in cheech and chong mm -hmm. so what they and you know i really think the reason they went after him is because not just he was famous but the cheech and chong movies made fun really hard and mean of, of the cops police. and yeah. and narcs and it was before the DEA but you know the the narcs in there were the buffoons and uh mm -hmm. Cheech and Chong were the good guys who always managed to evade them no matter what so that, yeah. was, even, that was even completely stoned out of their mind <laughs> they were still more clever yeah. than the goons yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh I think that's why they went after him and what they did was they got somebody in well it was, it was them they set up a fake you know address they got an address and a set up a fake person to to order something from them that was like from pennsylvania or something and cheech wrote him and sir chong wrote him and said no man i can't ship to pennsylvania i can't ship and they said it over and over and over and finally the the guy showed up you know a guy who lived in pennsylvania and worked for the feds showed up in california where chong's place was and just walked into the warehouse where they don't do retail sales and said yeah i'd like to buy uh, you know, a box of these water pipes for tobacco, nod, nod, wink, wink. And, uh, you know, they were like, uh, okay, we don't do that, but, uh, okay. If you have a credit card, uh, yeah. All right. So they just did it on the spot, uh -huh. gave them the box of it and they didn't look mm -hmm. that the guy lived in Pennsylvania and he, oh, and he said something like, yeah, I'll be taking <sighs> these back home soon, whatever. They totally mm -hmm. set him up and just really went around you know, basically did something that would have been entraption, entrapping, entraption before that entrapment, entra before that uh, Supreme yeah. Court burrito Supreme Court ruling. Yeah, they just yeah. screwed him, and you know, he made a movie about it. The movie shows him getting ready to go to jail, in jail, getting out of jail. Um, it's really kind of heart wrenching, you know, what yeah. happened to him. But uh, he's out, and I like his statement today of "We will end the DEA." <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> did he but, Did he say that today? Yeah. Nice, nice. I didn't even know that. Huh. Yeah, more relevant than I knew. Great. I think he wants to do it by voting, but uh, you yeah. know, I tried to get him to be in our movie, but someone I know oh, who yeah. knows him, I asked him, and he they said, "Oh man, he's really hard to work with or get to do anything. He's really curmudgeonly." So I didn't bother. Mm. I can see that. I can see that. He's an old man now, right? <laughs> old man. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I get. I guess the lesson you're trying to teach me is that um, the easiest way to get this done, or or the way that that people intend, the reason people intend to make printable guns a thing, is because then you wouldn't have to sell anything. You just create a design and share it through something like BitTorrent. Uh, and so the creator yeah, of the design, yeah, the sharer, is is basically immune to getting Tommy Chonked. To getting Tommy Chonked. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, really, the way I would have done it if I were Cody was one of two things. I would have <clears throat> um, not taken donations 
and basically done it as vaporware. Vaporware is when they announce software and it never comes out. I would have just pushed, I'm making it, I'm making it, I'm making it, and never done it to the point where somebody, you would have set it up to where somebody would have been like, I'm going to beat him at this, and someone else would have done it. Hmm. That's one thing I would have done. And I wouldn't have taken donations because then people think you're fraudulent if you if they found out you did that and you now I would announce it later. But okay. uh, the other way I I think it could have been done was if someone did it completely anonymously, you know. Yeah, yeah. Huh. And and then just uploaded it like via BitTorrent. See, see, this seems like something a perfect project for anonymous right if they're so open source and freedom loving <laughs> they probably hate why not those, do something man, like this unless they're in the hands of yeah, governments that's, that's trying kind of the point i'm trying to make man to it, it, is why don't they get the other half of the coin why why can't they take that extra step and see that power should be decentralized and that includes the power of defense i mean i mean i don't know that about anonymous but they're so into trying to like streamline democracy and make government yeah. work which is just an impossible task you know i mean whatever happened to the the ap anarchy idea you know what ap is and not associated press uh well if if you don't mean associated <clears throat> press i don't know what you mean no talking about this will get us droned i'm just gonna i'm talking about it in a historical standpoint <clears throat> there's some okay. guy who's currently in prison for tax evasion i think who came up with something in the 70s. He was a computer programmer guy, and he basically came up with this idea called assassination politics, uh, which was uh, um, the idea of having a Deadpool. You know what a Deadpool is? Deadpool uh, is, is where you bet on when someone's going to die. And mm -hmm. people do it for celebrities, and they do it even without exchanging money or anything. You know, They'll just say, like, I mean, when or if you if you search, you know, when will this celebrity die? You'll find websites of Deadpools. Um, okay. okay. And... The only way to really know what the Deadpool is actually to kill the person, which is not what Deadpools for celebrities are about. They're just, you know, entertainment. Um, uh -huh, but uh -huh. he basically said, you know, to get rid of bad politicians or something, he suggested the idea of setting up a Deadpool where people put money into it anonymously somehow. And then basically the person who kills the person gets all the money. Um, and I don't even want to go in, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's a good thing. It's just something that somebody came up with in the seventies and the guy got like droned 70 style for it. He got like raided <sighs> for tax evasion and I think yeah. he's still in prison. Um, and they wouldn't have bothered with him that hard if, you know, and they came to his house with a SWAT team. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we've all thought about those kinds of things before theoretically. Um, I don't know how effective something like that would be because, you have to change the mindset first, right? I mean, it's it's like when people ask Ron Paul, well, well, who should be chairman of the Fed then if you hate Ben Bernanke so much? And no, Ron Paul's like, no, it's, I know, that's not I know. That's, that's the flaw with it. But the flaw with it, even from his standpoint, was that in the 70s, there was no way to anonymously have any currency that people could donate and then be paid out. Whereas so. now the technology has caught <laughs> up with that. Yeah. BitTorrent, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, not BitTorrent, uh, Bit, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, you know, people have joked about like revisiting that, whatever. I mean, it's actually, AP is discussed in uh, Boston's book, Mulan Labe. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the biggest reason why I would be very wary of something like that is because I guess it, I guess the violence then is open sourced, but if, if that's the... If that's the setup, then what's to stop people from – what's to stop statists who are much more violent than uh, than anarchists? What's to stop what's statists to stop from putting Deadpools on Lou Rockwell and Nima Vidati and Michael Yeah, Bean and, 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 and you know, And what's to stop the guy that I pissed off on Reddit who called me a spammer for posting my own useful stuff? And then I posted back, well, I, I no one's really paying attention to you trying to call me a spammer when I'm not. I think you need to get more of your friends who also live in their mother's basement to work on this 24-7. <laughs> I mean, that guy might have a Bitcoin mining operation. He might be, you know, yeah, yeah. he might get me me killed. The thing is, if we want to take down the government because no good comes out of aggression and violence, um, why use aggression and violence to take down the government? That Then you've yeah. done nothing. You've done no net positive in the world. And that's not our goal. Our goal is not to use violence to end violence. It can't be done. It doesn't work. I mean, the, yeah. the thing to do is to remove the demand for the state. Now, how do you right. do that? 
uh, I guess you torrent the fiends. You seed the fiends, right? Every time you seed the fiends, the state dies a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good point. And, and the thing is, it's so hard. It's so hard because people are indoctrinated for so much longer. And, and some people get indoctrinated beyond repair. Like their brains are literally damaged with statism uh, after being in school for 12 years and being beat down. Um so I, I guess the solution is is just for there to be a group of people who who doesn't allow their kids to to go through that, and who sits there and tries to educate people who are still savable. Did you click on this drone tracking link? Uh, oh, there's a drone no, over Casper right amazing. now. There is a let's, drone let's over Casper right now. There, I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna have to put this in the show notes. Um. Yeah, government. Where does body. the all I <clears> see <throat> is a Google map with a bunch of dots on it? Yeah, I mean, how, it's where, where the drone. It's where drones are right now. I don't know, but click on how the one over them? Casper. It says U.S. Department of Energy guided systems technology mongoose drone helicopter status mm-hmm. active Casper Rocky Mountain oil field testing center Wyoming. The purpose. Yeah. This is freaking hilariously scary, but uh, I'm glad it's opened uh-huh. like this. I and I really doubt this is all the drones out there right now. I mean, this is probably if you if you click on the more information, it, it sends you to Electronic Frontier Foundation. Didn't you interview like EFF. one of the founders of that? I tried to. Uh, they never yeah. got back to me, but uh, mm-hmm. maybe I'll okay. try again now that we've been talking about drones and now they're cool finally. Yeah, <laughs> now they're cool finally. Ah, uh, okay. This is really bizarre, man. Yeah. Wow. Wow. These are these look like they're drones that have been like registered and gone. Yeah, through. I mean, is this the drone like? base of operation or is this where they are right now let me let me scroll in and see if i can uh see if that drone's over my house in colorado i mean uh, well where am i casper yeah let me see I, oh i was clicking on the denver one all right let's see. <laughs> drones all right i'm gonna turn off and take a little uh go sell some things here Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Oh, recording. <laughs> oh, I forgot. We weren't recording. So, so we were on break and you acted like we were still recording. You were saying that, uh, you know, the goons are looking at Cody Wilson, the printable gun guy, and you think that they've decided to uh, go balls to the wall and, and make their own printable gun design. Why, why do you, would you think the goons would do that? Because they can. I mean, if they have money for a drone over Casper, that's a proof of concept drone. It'd be a lot cheaper to <laughs> print a gun. I mean, is cheap. Cheaper's not even, a, you know, that doesn't even enter into their equation, man. Yeah, yeah. Just, hey, you know, I, I don't know. Put it this way. That's how I think. If I were a goon who worked at the Stop All Guns goon organization <clears throat> and somebody was doing something that hadn't been done before and getting a lot of publicity and mainstream press about it, I think I'd say, we need to 
do that to see if it's possible and how easy it is to do so we can see how much of a threat this is and how much we need to clamp down on it and and from what directions we need to clamp down on it you know if yeah, like yeah yeah you know they I probably would be surprised try if somebody pitched it and and if it's actually being done i don't know the government moves so slow so i'm kind of hesitant to say yeah they definitely probably already have that done um and then I was thinking, well, what if what if the government would want to do that for their own needs, so they can have you know replacement guns in theaters of war or wherever? Um, but I don't know if they'd want to do that either, because I feel like a big reason for the wars and for the police state is uh, its favors to people who make guns and make weapons, the military industrial complex, right? So uh, the lobbyists for Smith and Wesson or Ruger or whoever would probably be very against the government pursuing well, multiple guns of their but own. But here's here's what I would do if uh, if I were the government and wanted to do that i would i probably wouldn't set it up what i'd probably do is i'd probably commission smith and wesson to do it because smith and wesson actually already uses 3d printers for prototyping stuff ah, and what uh -huh. they often do with prototyping and it's a big industrial use of 3d printers is they'll prototype something out of plastic and then they use like wax and sand replacement methodology for casting something from that and that, I mean, that's how you get a workable piece and then you grind mm -hmm. it down and polish it and you can use it in a gun, you know? Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Good. So they, they draw the thing in CAD software. They, they print it with a 3d printer, get a plastic exact model of it. They put it in, you know, wax or something and then, uh, cast it. Oh, God, how they do it. I've seen it on how things are made. You know, they put it in sand, then they open the sand up and it holds the mold of it. Then they close the sand back up and then they pour brass into it or, you know, steel yeah. into it. And then it fills that space. Then they take it out and file off the stuff that's left over from where the hole was and then grind it down. And that's how they prototype things at, you know, places that have pretty much unlimited money like right. Smith right. & Wesson. Mm -hmm. And Smith & Wesson works so closely with police and military I mean, they have a line of guns called M and P. It's the military and police guns. That's what M and P stands for. God, yeah. I didn't. I didn't even yeah. get that. No. Yeah, you're. I th yeah. So I don't want one of those. Never. I think you never, had never, one. Ever. I think. I think that the gun I sold you the, that you sold that Frank, was, the, was that was the MMP. precursor. That was the precursor okay. to the okay. M P. Um, oh. that was the Ugh. what was it? It was the nine ten S. But yeah, I maybe. Uh, no, no, I guess not. Maybe the S standard for state, but I think it standard for small because <laughs> it was a little bit smaller than the bigger one. Mug lumps and state. Steel? I don't know. I don't no, know. it's military and police. Uh, oh, MS. It, it it was steel. Yeah, that was yeah, nine yeah. ten steel. It was a ten round mag and a steel sta steel nine gun. millimeter ten round mag steel uh, slide. I guess. Man, looking at that map was really disorienting for me and almost like hallucinatory, kind of like surreal. I. I it shifted my mind, you know, ah. in some way. I mean, I, I really, I, I almost feel like I'm tripping. Maybe it's like the government is spraying something on Casper from that drone. I'm I don't know. Totally but tripping balls. Not tripping, just like, you know, you ever get a dizzy spell? Um, you ever hyperventilate really. when you're a kid to try to get high? No. <laughs> really? Do you, do you know how that works? Uh, to get high? No. Is that the choking game? Yeah, well, not the choking game. It's like... You breathe in and out as rapidly as possible, like 20 or 30 times, and then you hold your breath and someone behind you puts their arms like under your diaphragm and squeezes you as hard as you can. It can make you pass out, but it generally makes you really wobbly on your knees and you kind of like your vision shrinks down to like a pinhole or a tunnel and then mm. your hearing's affected and then it kind of comes out of it and you go like whoa it's kind of like being high without the euphoria like being it it's kind of like inhalants it's kind of like that mm -hmm, really mm -hmm. you know like lsd you forget your name and inhalants you forget your species kind of thing it's like <laughs> you really you almost like die but it's not mm. really that dangerous yeah that doesn't sound too fun to me but that's what happened know. to me just sitting here like I, I i looked at that drone page read it on it clicked around a little bit and then stood up and I was like, and it wasn't just from standing up. I'm not out of shape like that, but I just went, I just kind of like went, whoa, oh, I'm mic control. Drones. I'm standing up, Drones. holding my mic going, yo, 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 yeah. mic check, yeah. drone check, drone check. But uh, man, that's it. You know what it is? What? Drones 
have been, the whole time I've been aware of them, to me, have been a theoretical thing in my mind. Like, I know they're there, but that was almost like seeing one. It's like someone said, there's one over Casper, and I thought they were kidding, and I went and looked, and I'm like, there's a fucking drone over Casper. There's not one over Austin. <laughs> there's one nearby, but not Austin, but there's one over my town right now, and it's a quadricopter. Yeah. Or yeah. a helicopter of some sort. Well, I mean, there's no stopping it, right? I don't want to be a Luddite and be like, oh, drones are evil. Because I don't think drones are drones evil. Drones are great if we have themselves. the Second Amendment. We need the Second Amendment with them. We need us to be able to have anything the government can have and have them cheap enough. You know, someone was telling me the other day that the reason, their theory that the reason that um, the price of memory storage has gone way, way, way down to where like you can buy a terabyte hard drive for 75 bucks is mm. because of the government doing things like building that um, that center in Utah. <laughs> uh, so it's some crumbs from the government table. Yeah, it's trickle down yeah. economics, you know, as mm. Reagan said, mm. which is uh, the rich pissing on the poor. I've heard it described as <laughs> lick it up, slaves. Yeah, yeah, um, man. Yeah, man. The thing is, you can't. I don't think you can have a government and and. And have it not get to the point where the people will never have the guns that the government has. Uh, I mean, if you're state, if you're a statist in any right, uh, you lose that that free that freeing aspect of self defense and the Second Amendment or the the concept behind the Second Amendment if you support the state of any kind. Because eventually, since the state has the ability to steal money instead of make money by themselves, the state will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the state can build weapons that no private actor would ever have the money to research or fund or develop or, or sell, right? I mean, in what market uh, do you think the nuclear bomb would have been built as, as a market as a market transaction? Mining. I mean, seriously. In, 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 uh, in Scott Beezer and uh, El Neal Space Smith's mining. novels, okay. space yeah, mining. Maybe. And maybe. I think that's also – isn't that also in The Moon is a Harsh Mistress? Isn't that where they got the idea? Don't they use don't nukes know. for blowing up asteroids or mining asteroids Do for they use precious nukes? materials, metals? I don't remember. I feel like if they did, then they would have lobbed nukes back at the Earth instead of just rocks. Because that's, well, that's how the, they, they beat the, the state on Earth or on Yeah, on but Terra. they probably couldn't get, get a hold of them, you know? Mm. Yeah, maybe. What is this greasy gun, someone? Is this a high point that someone posted? Damn, uh, it says Chechen Chechen self-made weapons. This is, is a it, high is point. Is? Looks like a high point. I lost it. I, I uh, yeah. Welcome to Casper, Wyoming. Probably no. It, it, it looks six it looks days. like a, it looks like it was built out of pipes and uh, and a knife hilt or handle. That's no, I was awesome. looking at something else. I'm looking at a thing that has a sharpie through the uh, trigger guard. Uh, no. Is that a high point, Travis? Looks like a high point. Did you ever shoot my high point? Did I give it to you? No, I took it back. I was going to give it to you, but I wouldn't give that to my worst enemy, man. That thing like missed fire. What's wrong with it? Every other bullet, and I wasn't okay. limp wristing it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, it's a high point. I, I knew it. They just have this like greasy, weird shape. <laughs> They're fun mm -hmm. though. Does Travis? Does yours work okay? Mine just jammed all the time. Mine is reliable as hell. He says, "Yeah, I I bought mine at a sporting goods store. It, basically, here was what it was. I took some stuff back." that I didn't want that I bought at a sporting goods store. I, or I went in to sell some stuff, some gun stuff I didn't want anymore. And they gave me like $200 in credit. You know, they'd be like, we'll give you 115 cash or 200 in credit. And I said, I'll take the 200 in credit. And I needed to buy some ammo. And I bought like a hundred dollars worth of ammo. And I'm like, well, what can I get for a hundred dollars else? And I was like, Oh, a high point. And, uh, I bought one, I bought a 45 and, uh, I took it out to the range. I know that if you limp wrist them, they have problems because they're blowbacks. So you have to really hold them hard. I really held it hard, and I fired one one mag through it, and it jammed like eight times in a mm. fourteen round mag. Well, I, I've round heard, and, and Travis says in the mag. chat room that you, the magazine is the issue with the jamming. I've heard a uh, break them in for a little bit, and b. Uh, there's actually on the web if you there's high point users forums and and people talk about their use of high point like fans. Uh, there's something you can do to the mag like pry it open a little bit or something. Maybe Travis can tell us. Why but, don't you uh, um, there's cue some up kind of hack you can do with the cue mags. up the high point song? And that's good to know. Oh, that's yeah. good information. Um, but I took it back to the store, and I was like, I got my money back, and 
I think they took like 10% restocking fee because it had been like a week. Uh, so <laughs> the guy said, you know, we've never had any of these return and we sell a lot of them. And I said, yeah, they're, they're dropped on the floor at the, floor first, at the robbery. first robbery. <laughs> nice. Uh, right, so play, you want me to play? Play, play, our, yeah, high play our high song. point song. All right, here it goes. Should race cars be outlawed? How about boxing? Skydiving? Camping in bear country? Those things are like drugs. Voluntarily doing something dangerous and exhilarating for kicks. one story i get a high point nine oh you do it what are the words do what give us the words oh yeah yeah it's i don't uh, want i can't rap man <laughs> it's at one store i get a high point nine milli papers for my joint and a pack of fillies yes i'm feeling very honored but if the world were truly free i could also buy my marijuana that's the first so talk about words. why we had a i said you should write a song about a high point and people made funny comments on youtube about that like did he just praise a high point? Wow. <laughs> now, why did we say that? Now, okay, so here was my thinking at the time is, man, sometimes you're broke. And just because you're broke doesn't mean you should go without um, without things that you want or need. I mean, that's the beauty of the market, right, is the market will try to get any kind of uh, demographic to buy their stuff if they can. Uh, and so having something like a high point, that's like that's like going and buying a 40s of Mickey's or, or a single of, of Miller High Life, right? Sometimes you're broke, but you need your beer or, or you need whatever. Or a cheap, whatever. good prostitute. Cheap, good prostitute, a 99 cent menu from fast food joint, whatever, right? The high point is for somebody who needs a gun because sometimes you need a gun or you feel you need a gun. Uh, whatever the case is, you just want you a want gun to protect and you're your broke. family, man. Right. And you know, it's, gun, cheap it's a guns are outlawed. Thing that the market allows for something. Cheap like guns. That are called Saturday night specials and outlawed somewhere. And that's, that's racist, man, because basically that, racist, that means yeah. that like poor black people and Mexicans can't protect their families. And they're specifically outlawed for sale in California. And, uh, they're outlawed for possession in New York city. Uh, even if you have like a handgun permit, you can't have a high wow. point there. So they just want that's rich people ridiculous. to be able to protect yeah. themselves. Yeah. See, that's, that's a good example of, of the real class warfare, right? Uh, I mean, liberals are always like, class warfare, the rich corporations are stomping on us. No, the real class warfare is the politically connected stomping on the poor and stomping on the taxpayers, it's the tax eaters doing things like this, creating regulations that keep people who don't have the money to play within the system from doing – from from getting their basic human rights filled, right? I mean, if if you're if you can't afford five hundred dollars for a Glock, um, the market gives you a solution. The market says, "Well, buy a high point for a hundred dollars," but the state says, "No, you can't do that." Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, I, I love I love Travis's reference to Big Flats beer because that is another genius invention of the market. Is uh, at Walgreens, you can go buy a six pack of six. Of uh, of Big Flats beer, it's it's three dollars for a six pack. So basically, fifty cents a beer. It's great. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he also said you should check out the guy trying to destroy the the video of a guy trying to destroy a high point on YouTube. Now we saw an interesting video of someone trying to destroy an SM fifty eight microphone, uh, and they 
God, they froze it. They dropped it from 30 feet onto the the ball. They, they stuck ran it, it over. They microwaved it. They poured beer on it, although we think they peed on it after they podcasted and poured, you know, <laughs> we, we pee in bottles. Pot we pee. pee in the fiends. We pee in bottles. So, uh, yeah. but the problem is at the end of doing all this wretched stuff to this really good hundred dollar microphone they uh they said and the mic worked fine and i'm like show me don't just tell me and you said they could fake it but you know i i think it could be not fake too i think i mean i guess it could be faked still but like i want to see them pull it out of the microwave plug it in and use it without an edit but i guess they could just dub the sound in later but they just dub the sound in later i just really that you wouldn't even see an edit like that you might be able to hear it if you had really good ears well if i had a mic to do that with which i'm not going to do I would do it, and the thing is, people trust me. People know me, yeah. so it'd be oh, right. Michael Dean's doing it. He wouldn't lie, you know. Yeah. He'd he'd yeah. want to he'd want to show if it got yeah. destroyed. So you know, I actually saw um, when I was a reporter one of <laughs> one of our reporters who didn't last very long um, left the camera bag like in the road, and a bus ran over it <sighs> and crushed the microphone. <laughs> Uh, and it looked just like when they ran over it, but uh, I don't think anybody ever used that mic again. I think it was kaput. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, back to high points. The thing you didn't mention was the high point store you're talking about, the actual store. It's a drive through liquor oh, and yes. drug store in Casper that sells high points. That's the only guns they sell. Uh, no, they sold other guns. They sold other guns. Um, but really? Th they were all cheap budget guns. Yeah, they sold rifles, man. They sold cheap shotguns, cheap rifles. Uh, well, high point makes they, carbines. They make like nine millimeter rifles. Yeah, I've actually been interested in getting one of those. They're, they're, cheap too they're like 200 i don't know man bucks. i like what boston said about carbines is uh, you don't want to shoot a p uh, pistol cartridge no uh, one of them it's pistol caliber i mean basically if you're gonna go to the trouble to have something the size and weight of a rifle why not have something with the power of a rifle yeah yeah that's a good point too that's a good point too um i mean I it's gonna know. have a little more power because cool. it's a longer barrel but uh you know i think the only thing i would bother with that's um rifle you know, that's a, that's a, like that would be a lever action 357. Cause they do make rifles, but 357 Ooh, is kind sexy. of a rifle cartridge that is powerful, fits in yeah. giant handguns. I mean, my handgun yeah. is like six inches long that fires that thing. And my <sighs> snubby that fires 357 and 38, when you fire 357 through it, it, after you fire two or three shots, you're like, you okay, don't want to shoot anymore. My hand hurts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh, yeah, the inspiration uh, for the high point um, was that store because it was it was amazing because you buy your both papers there. Yeah, <laughs> you buy your rolling papers, your blunt wraps, and your gun and your booze uh, all at the same. It's like it's like the the grocery store. You know when people make fun of the ATF, they say, "Oh, it should be all things fun." Or alcohol, tobacco, and firearms should be a, a convenience. They literally store. sold alcohol, tobacco, and firearms at this yes. one store. Yes, yes, yeah. And, and 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 I guess the first line is, "Wouldn't it be great if they also sold little nickel sacks of weed or or grams or or hey even bulk, you know." Here's your quarter pound in a bucket kind of a thing. Why not? <laughs> Why not, man? You know, I did a blog post about comparing that store to an art gallery in San Francisco that's in a really shitty neighborhood and saying why I thought it's called More Guns, Less Art. And I'm going to post that in the – it's got a picture of the store. It's the Buy Right Drug Store in Casper and uh, more, more Guns, Less Art. And basically my premise was – <clears throat> somebody wanted me to add them as a friend for some art gallery in San Francisco where like, you know, Shepard Ferry was doing a showing and I'm like, Oh, the guy that made the Obama poster. Yeah. I really want to support that. But it's in this, it's a new gallery. It's in this really crappy neighborhood where, uh, uh, called the tenderloin, which is basically like, <laughs> there's a park there. My friend called sucker punch park. Cause he got sucker punched there twice and mugged trying to buy drugs. Um, and it's a block or two blocks from where bomb recorded our first record hyde street studios and uh yeah so i did it i did an, a weird article comparing both of those places it's called more nice. guns less art and it really pissed a lot I remember of people that. off I remember that. yeah <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so uh, speaking I mean, of poor people go ahead speaking of speaking poor of people what? Poor, yeah, people. poor people. The mm -hmm. shoeless New York City man that the cop bought the boots for isn't homeless after all. <laughs> he has a house, right. he has an apartment, and he is a professional scammer panhandler who goes out and leaves his shoes somewhere and pretends to be barefoot 
to scam people out of money. <laughs> Man, the uh, you know that's kind of like pays when, for his apartment with Section Eight vouchers too. Yeah, so, so, so he's not, collecting government money and then panhandling as right. A, at, for, at in first, fraud. At, in some other cast, I was like, well, he's he's a more voluntary. It's more honest work than the cop who gave him the boots, right? Because he's panhandling, he's asking for money. But uh, at the same time, he's committing where fraud. He's, where he sleeps at night uh, is stolen money, so there's that. So he's not. And he's committing honest. fraud by presenting himself as homeless. I guess. Well, I mean, I don't know if he has a sign that says homeless or not. If he does, he's committing fraud. In that my would mind. be the key. I don't know if it's fraud or if it's donator beware. Kind I of bet a thing. it's fraud, man. I mean, if a guy's doing that and someone says, you know, like a lot of times people chat people up before they panhandle them. I've been around a lot of panhandlers. Because when I was a bike messenger, I'd be like, you know, eating a burrito a few feet away from one because you're you just eat where you can, uh-huh. and uh, and I'd often like give the let the last couple bites of my burrito to them too if they looked really pathetic, but uh, you know, well, a lot of times people chat them up. They're like they want to know their uh-huh. story, you know, yeah, like yeah, and then they true. give them some money, either either based either the amounts based on how good the story is or. I think it's like they would have given it to him anyway, but they just want to be human with him and engage him a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. And I've never heard any of them say, uh, and there was a lot of section eight housing for homeless people in San Francisco. It was a really good city to the point where like in a lot of other cities, if you were on welfare and they got sick of you, they'd say, okay, here's something we'll do for you. We'll give you a one way bus ticket to San Francisco and five bucks a day for food for the bus trip. If you sign a thing that says you'll never get welfare in our city again, that was pretty common. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of the bums there, they're panhandling probably did have a piss in the same hotel room to live in some of the time, but I've never heard, I've heard a lot of people say to them like, Oh, you're homeless. How'd you become homeless? And they're like, well, because I blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I've never heard them say, well, I've got a roof over my head, but that's about it. You know, why would yeah. they bother telling yeah. them that if they're going to get more money, if they don't, yeah, that's a good point. But um, I'm sure there's you know, one I, honest I, I bum don't out assume, there. But some I don't assume that there. panhandlers are always homeless because because of that very thing. Oh, yeah. Is, is there, there's panhandlers who do have a, sh- a homeless shelter to go to, which they still have a roof over their head. Or they've got, you know, like you say, a piss in the sink place to go home to at night. Um, so I, I think there's always donator beware when it comes to, you know, giving money I think, directly. I think to that this guy in New York City has, has become temporarily the most hated man in New York City, probably. <laughs> Yeah. Even yeah, the status hate him, man. Do they? I haven't seen the, the blowback, well, so yeah, to speak, I, from, from I, that. I haven't either, but I'm assuming, you know, oh, man, that hero cop, you made a fool out of a good guy, man. Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> hey, did you know the government promised? Oh, you know what? We talked about my friend Kurt Lehovic, the guy who invented the uh-huh. microchip and had yeah. holes in his shoes. Because he, yeah. he did so much more than that cop. And never got praises for it. And that's one reason I wanted uh, to talk about him was like, right. this cop went and spent, you know, a fifth of his weekly stolen paycheck to buy this guy some really nice boots or an eighth. Kurt Lahovic gave as much money as he could to house like six or seven homeless people at a time in his home and give them a nice home. And he lived in a, in a crappy like hovel corner of the house. Mm-hmm. So he'd have more money to spend on them. Yeah, yeah. For yeah, years, that, that, that's for years. out of the good of his heart, right? That that's the opposite of bitterness or cynicism, uh, and and you know everything. I don't know what was his story. I mean, he wasn't a tax eater at all, was he? He was. I don't know. He. Free, free kind I of mean, guy. I have no idea. Uh, he might have had a pension from working for Honeywell or whatever the company he was that he worked for, or he might have been on Social Security. I don't know. I mean, I don't really think Social Security is being a tax eater because they steal the money from you by gunpoint and you can't not do it. Yeah. You know, I think that's different than welfare, but I mean, it's incremental, but you know, people got on Ron Paul cause he takes his social security check, but that was his answer too. And that came out after I had my answer for that. Yeah. Yeah. They take it from me in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I guess that's totally true, but um, where, where's the line though? I mean, I, I feel like we should draw an important line between being a tax eater. I think it's personal and you can't really say, I think it's, um, <clears throat> and that comes from my thing of AA of like in AA, you don't get diagnosed as an alcoholic. You have to self-diagnose, you know, mm-hmm. a, AA membership is open to anyone who believes they they have a problem with alcohol. That's, that's what you have to do to be a member. And I really like that. It's like, it's not, Oh, when they started, you had to lose everything. They wouldn't take you unless you were homeless. Wow. Or, you know, about to be divorced or you'd lost your mm-hmm. job really badly or, you know, you had to hit 
or uh, rock, bottom. rock bottom. They kind of yeah. they kind of moved the bottom up with time, and I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, I told you about my friend, this Persian girl in San Francisco who came into NA when she was about eighteen or seventeen, but. She, uh, no, she was like 21 or 22, but she looked about 16. She was really young looking and she was really healthy looking for a junkie. She was like, she did drugs for about a year and hard drugs for about a year and, and then like instantly got it. She was like, I need to get clean. And she went to NA and she got clean and she stayed clean. Um, that's really rare. Usually people are older and go through a lot more years of it and try a bunch of times and fail and go back and fail and go back and finally get it. Um, but I remember she and I were at this like old bikers NA meeting. It was like old, scruffy, bearded, you know, people look like Ben Quaker, uh, but a lot more rough yeah. around the edges. And one of them came up to her while we were having cigarettes outside afterwards. And he said, what do you do, little girl? Do a bong hit and fall off your skateboard? <laughs> <laughs> What'd she say? She said, "No, I'm I'm an IV hero. I'm I'm a needle user of heroin, and I have sold my ass for drugs. And Ugh. fuck you, basically. She didn't say fuck you, but like, yeah, like you know, if you're gonna be that way, if you're trying to drive me out of here, it's not gonna work. I'm staying." Right. And the guy was right. like, thought for a second, was like, "Good for you, respect. Yeah, <laughs> good for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, like respect. He respected her. You know, yeah. like, oh, okay, okay, you sold your ass. You what? You're welcome here." <laughs> little girl L like like bob saget you ever suck some dick for some marijuana <laughs> hell goes to to na for his pot use <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i've seen a very few people in na whose primary drug was pot i've met a couple of them and i'll tell you the junkies kind of have that attitude like they had with this girl uh yeah yeah you know but that, that, was actually, the, that was the bit and half baked is, is Dave Chappelle goes in for marijuana use and everybody's like booing him out. Like, that's not a drug. Yeah. I've only met one guy who was in it. I mean, basically, the thing is, you have to welcome everybody. If you're going to be a good NA or A member, you have to welcome everybody yeah. in, no matter how high their sexy bottom was. What a high sexy bottom they had. <laughs> but uh, there was this one dude who was a friend of mine whose drug of choice was marijuana, and he was really screwed up from it. I mean, he like couldn't form a complete sentence for the first six weeks. From not smoking pot? No, from from pot. I mean, he oh. he was a dealer and he had access to like bales, mm -hmm. and he was literally chain smoking chronic, you know, all day, yeah. every day for years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he may have had some mental problems to begin with, or some over susceptibility or something. But I mean, yeah. the guy was so toasty when he came in. Like even you know, like, and he was smoking still the first couple times he came in. <laughs> so I, I saw him high and he was just like unfathomably like couldn't communicate with people. And then he was like, I remember him saying like, I've got two days clean and he, he was my friend. I used to go out to coffee with him all the time and he could not fucking speak for about six weeks. And then slowly the wow. cloud kind of lifted and he could. So wow. I guess I've met one person whose life what he's having was really wrecked by <laughs> pot without being arrested and without, you know, just like, yeah, yeah like that's rare though. Yeah, yeah. True that, man. I'll and, have what he's having. You know, oh. every, every situation is unique, and that's why trusting some kind of monopoly to impose one rule for 300 million people is the stupidest thing I ever heard. Uh, what, unfortunately, song, it's, what song do you think we should play? Yeah, it is time for a break, huh? I need to get a, yeah. a beverage here. Uh, a tasty beverage? See. A tasty, tasty I want to apologize beverage. to Sean Duvalli, our uh, fiend's torrent master and that's now his official position i called him shane duvalli last week he's sean duvalli i guess it's my stepson's name is sean so it's like in my I, mind i corrected that is you sean. i corrected you? you but sometimes you don't listen to me okay uh, he's the torrent, yeah, ma torrent I, I, I was, master i was like i was like did you mean sean but you were you were, like you said you were talking and talking and talking yeah and talking, i do talk, that talk, 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 he's talk, sean talk, duvalli talk, 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 talk. he's our fiend monster our torrent monster torrent master yeah. Yeah, torrent yeah, monster. Yeah. Whoa, monster. Uh, uh, uh. So if you're not if you're not torrenting the fiends and uh, doing it twenty four seven, you're stealing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Michael said it, not me. I'm kidding. Uh, all right, I'll, let's I'll see. post the uh, torrent link again. You want to play the pee on me pushy bottom remix? Yeah, that was pretty popular last time, and people were like, "What the fuck was that?" I should probably put that up on the uh, the. I'm going to put that up on the torrent server today too or tomorrow next time i need to test something on the torrent server i'll put that up how's that 
Because I don't need to put it up today because it's going to be in here, but I don't want to play all 16 minutes of it or whatever. Why, why don't we take it from the middle since people probably only heard the first six minutes of it. So we'll take it okay. at, at 6.30. And, okay. That sounds um, good. So here, here's Key on Me, Pushy Bottom Remix. Uh, Sans it's me and my wife. Me and my wife. It, made this and i didn't queue it up properly i just put it in the middle on itunes so if, if it sounds kind of you know like the queue didn't come at the right place screw it. it's <laughs> itunes blame it blame apple blame I'll steve I'm, jobs i'll just tell you when i'm done and say all right, all right. yeah here it is Nice story, but I don't hear my name in it. <laughs> Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. 
Download U-Torrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W.D. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon and IMDb. You can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site, or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiend's message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Yo, what's up? What's up? So we're Shut trying. Down. No we're trying. To, we're trying to get on mainstream radio. I just remembered. Uh, I, I don't think. <laughs> All right. I don't think shutting that down is going to help. But um, I don't want to say. I don't want to say who it is. Hey, Beulah Trash, how you doing? I know Beulah Trash yeah. in person. Uh, I've had a tasty beverage with him in a bar. Did, did in he Wyoming. used to be trash trashed? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Because so, I had um, a friend named Trash Trashed, and then he stopped being Trash Trashed. So I was wondering if he was Balua Trash, but yeah, I guess, I guess there's multiple people in the Trash family. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Anyway, go on, go on. We're uh, trying to keep it clean for the kitties, and we have failed. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to go into de- details of it, but uh, so somebody who uh, who is on mainstream radio on a whole lot of stations made a recommendation for us to us of us to their for us syndicating people yeah. to check it out. It was two days ago. I haven't heard back from them yet, but uh I'm not gonna edit that out. But you know, we would edit that we would have that. Like what we want to do is produce a non live show once a week that's syndicated on radio that would be radio friendly, which would still be uh you know, a lot of the shows on there are like not very pleasant to the state. But uh they don't they don't have songs about peeing on Ladies saying pee on me. So, uh, do you know that? It could no. happen. I mean, H- Howard Stern has ladies deep throat th- kill bosses on. Yeah, radio, he's not so. on radio anymore. He's oh, on XM true. satellite radio. We're talking like FM over the air yeah, terrestrial. Yeah. Get it in your car radio. But but he got popular doing that kind of shenanigans on mainstream radio. Yeah, after paying <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines to the FCC <laughs> that we don't have and no station would pay for us. Yeah. Although I think he's kind of changed the way the FCC works to where like that kind of stuff's more acceptable on radio a little bit, but yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Worms. Yeah, someone uh someone out there is torrenting all their stuff. I can see it right now. Someone in the United States is downloading like everything. They're on Comcast. I don't know where, but they're uh 
IP starts with 50.151. I won't say the rest. So, yeah. hey, 50.151, if you're listening out there in Radioland. Yeah. yeah. IP on me. Yeah. Worms. So, yeah, uh, Fiends hopefully growing and growing and growing is the idea uh, <laughs> through organized methods organized and, crime. and unorganized methods, uh, dispersed method, methods like uh, BitTorrent. BitTorrent, yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Full frontal assault and flanks at the same time. You don't even know where the Fiends are coming from, so you got to learn. You better ask somebody. Yeah. You better ask somebody. So um, back to PGP, every time you send an encrypted email, the state dies a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, because of the reason we stated earlier, which is uh, if everybody's always PGP encrypting all the time, even for, hey, look at my dad's spam. Yeah, uh, <laughs> dad spam. It, it gives the government too much. Uh, it, 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 you flood them with information. So like like you say in the blog post, it's like them trying to find a needle in a warehouse full of haystacks. Yeah, even if they yeah. can, even if they can use their mega or, data center, or maybe it's more crack. like them trying to find a, a needle with a specific serial number engraved on it in a warehouse full of stacks of needles. <laughs> Dad spam. I should read that from the glossary. Oh, did you come up with the idea of calling the free market the market, or did someone else? Of calling it that, I think so. I don't know. I don't like to take credit. I for thought things, you'd said cause... you'd heard it. Didn't you hear it on like? Rothbard the, radio or no, Lou no, Rockwell con- or something? The concept I derived it from was Franz Oppenheimer, but he didn't make – this was like years and years ago. And he didn't make the argument that uh, everybody in the liberty movement – because I don't think there was a liberty movement back then. He didn't make the argument that everybody should say market instead of free market and that free market was redundant. He didn't make that argument. Okay. I like that but, argument. Uh, I'm going to add that to the uh, glossary and credit you with it then. But it, yeah, its origin is from somewhere else. And – and maybe I was influenced too by Ben Stone. I don't think he's ever come out and explicitly said that, but um, he. So it was, it was Ben Stone and Rothbard, or Ben Stone and who? Who? And Franz who, who? Oppenheimer. Uh, or probably didn't my. He, didn't he invent the bomb? Or was he an anarchist, or both? N- no, no, Oppenheimer. Somebody said they want Franz. drones to pee on them. <laughs> Do they? Uh, let me make sure, Franz. Yeah, yeah, Franz Oppenheimer. No, he didn't invent the bomb. You're thinking of somebody else who's sounds... another Oppenheimer. Yeah, yeah. Not, not. So Franz read Dad Spam. I just posted the uh, link for the glossary in Freedom Fiends. Oh, I should add Liberty Mission to that too. Yeah. Uh, have we gotten on board with that? Is that our thing now too, man? Yeah, except we have to say it with. Um, first, you take a Liberty Movement in the morning, and then you have room <laughs> for to work on the Liberty Mission. We fiendified it. Yeah. Yeah, because it sounds, you know, Ben Quaker is great, but his telling of it alone, if we said it, would sound like we're quoting a professor. And, you know, we were, we, even in college, man, we were the class clowns. I was a class clown. I don't know. I, I'd sit in the back room and make pee jokes to the pretty girl sitting next to me. I wasn't a class clown, but I was funny. Like, I wasn't a class clown because that wasn't my only bit, you know. It I probably got you laid so. more than making the pee jokes to the pretty girl like I did. <laughs> I actually yeah. didn't get laid much in college. It was really strange. Uh, I'd ha- I had sex early. I was 14, first time I had sex with a girl. I was 15, but I had but, just uh, turned 15. Yeah, but I didn't really have good sex until I was 19, and then it was like I was a god. Second girl I had sex with, I was like, nice. oh, my God. Just yeah, yeah my, my first time, the girl, girl didn't even so. take her bra off. It was ridiculous. <clears throat> this like, girl I, used to, I used had to sex before bikers. I saw boobs. Mm-hmm. Ah, I see. Except your you. mama's boobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Were you breastfed? Yeah, totally, man. Totally. Me too, but I was also the youngest, which is pretty obvious to anybody who listens to Five Minutes of the Fiends that I was the youngest child of four. You're the baby. Yeah. Uh, pay attention to me. I don't know. Why do you me. say it's pretty obvious? I don't know, because I'm a uh, brat. Yeah, you kind of are. <laughs> uh, let's see. Glossary. Uh, you want me to read something from the glossary? Well, what did you want me to read from the glossary? Something. Uh, Hero is listening. I'd like to say hello to Hero. Hero, I see you out there. Listening from Germany. Yeah, yeah. I know it's, anyway. it's, our, it's our seed box IP. I know that's him. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. He runs our seed box. He runs one of them. He runs the... Uh, the, the one we don't pay for that, that yeah, we're going yeah, yeah. to work out some kind of deal where 
he's going to start a business and I guess I can't get him. I can't get a hold of him. So I'll just tell him, yeah, here's, here's the thing. You start the business, you do whatever you want with it. You take the idea I've come up with, you give us eternal unlimited seed box for life. And if you make over $5,000 on it, you pay me 5% of what you make, but I don't have time to run a business. So there, I just gave you a business. <laughs> I just did a written contract. There'll be a recording of this later. It's oral, uh, but it's legally well, binding. There has to be a meeting of the minds. He no, there has to, to be him to agree to it. Otherwise, it's like the government. It's exactly, like me saying, exactly. I, have, would I have roped you into a contract. He, he can pigeon me. He can just write back and say, He, he would okay. have to respond to that. He said, okay, I'm listening. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> hero is my hero. Hero, I wrote a um I have PGP now too, so um I should I should send I don't know if he uses email though. He's he's the guy that turned me on to the idea of just using pigeon. Like there's no record of it. With an email, there's even a record on your end at least, but with with uh Yeah with man Pigeon <sighs> Pigeon's easier to use too. But that's, I'm gonna that's make kinda it why I have I haven't done the PGP <clears throat> thing yet, mostly because why do that when I have Pigeon, man? Anything I need plus the only person I really talk to that uh I would definitely want to always be encrypted all those people are on pigeon so i can just pigeon them man yeah yeah it's like pgp opens it up for strangers to sh send you shit and then say like oh see he received my blah 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 that is illegal and i can prove i sent it to him or something i don't know right right yeah. pigeon requires uh a meeting of the minds in the sense that uh you have to you have to verify each other it's more uh, anarcho-capitalist whereas pgp with a public key up is more socialist anybody can bug you and make a contract yeah. with you that you don't sign yeah yeah so you're gonna add uh market to the glossary how are you gonna <laughs> add that <laughs> i don't know i'll uh, do it later but i think you should read the definition for dad spam because i worked really hard on it it's really funny as hell and you just use the term without defining it and we haven't used it in a while so okay. go for it i thought man. we go say dad it. spam all the time all right dad spam equals forwarded crap that old people who can barely use a computer email to everyone they know usual topics include heartfelt letter from a dying marine proof that obama is a secret muslim things we said in 1955 and <laughs> danger you might die if blank those are easily debunked by a quick look at snopes.com dad spam is easy to spot it usually contains lots of capital letters and exclamation points and rows and rows of carrots pointed to the right marks from being forwarded again and again by people who don't know that they can remove those marks and it's always cc'd to everyone never be cc'd dad spam is usually sent from an aol or yahoo account <laughs> <laughs> Michael has a theory that all dad spam originates from a team of paid hacks at some right wing organization. Hacks, possibly not either. Yeah, hacks. I said hacks, right? Uh, yeah, I, th I heard hackers, but yeah, hacks. Oh, your old man ears. Possibly hey, either accuracy you? in media or the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. DJ coined the phrase dad spam. <laughs> Worms. Yeah. I luckily don't get any of it at all especially from my dad because dj gets it that. grandma spam yeah grandma spam is included in dad spam it is called dad spam yeah yeah because you don't um, really want to make fun of grandma but dad you can kind of make fun of because <laughs> you know he could he, he, he could kick your ass more recently than grandma could my, my wife gets it from old people in her family that will remain unidentified here and she forwards it to me and i'm like wow that's how <laughs> i get to to look at dad spam heroes heroes uh commenting to me on pigeon he should be commenting in the um chat room but he said something funny is mom spam is the same of dad spam but occasionally includes kitten pictures <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah my dad doesn't even text my dad can barely surf the web and can barely send email and can't listen to a podcast which is probably good because uh i don't you know i mean i wouldn't it wouldn't harm me if he heard me talking about banging tranny hookers and shooting crocodile but i think it would bug him <laughs> you know we did an interview with him on on uh when we were on the adam curry network it's up it's up on the site you think it bug him or do you think he'd understand? Like, um, <laughs> I think he. Uh, better yet, I think he wouldn't understand. I think. Really? I think it'd be as uncrackable to him as a an, an, an PGP encrypted email. See, my dad just kind of chuckles like Doctor Hibbert and says, "Nima's crazy, man," because <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> my dad. My dad expects those kinds of things from me. Is so. he the Persian Doctor Hibbert? He's the Persian Doctor Hibbert. Slap. He's the Persian Jamaican Doctor Hibbert. Wow. <laughs> he, always, Jamaican. He, he always says he always says mon yeah mon, mon. he says mon after everything why hmm. do these bad things mon yeah this is a favorite phrase of his that we we hear all the time yeah. but uh yeah man screw the state 
F it. F it and it's A. Uh, yeah. The thing about dad spam is sometimes it's like a broken clock or it can be right for the wrong reasons. Like like with the secret Muslim thing, uh, it's hilarious that Obama actually is supporting uh, al-Qaeda and terrorists in places like Syria. And uh, he's killing a lot of Muslims, though, too. I mean, it, you know. Right. That's why it's funny. It's, 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 he's, he's supporting al-Qaeda not because he's some secret Muslim. He's supporting al-Qaeda because for some reason it's what Israel wants to have happen so they can destabilize Syria to – weaken iran for their own selfish reasons is your grandfather uh muslim you know you i know, doubt you know it. You, you, have you, you met him you're talking about my dad's dad yeah i he came to visit me when i was born i was like the first baby born in in my generation for either my mom's family or my dad's family so they placed high hopes in me and then i became a <laughs> nima fiend and talking about training That's nima fiend. but but uh, at any rate i doubt it because um most of my dad's family and his peers in the town that they were in, uh, first of all, it was not in you know the capital city of Iran. It wasn't in Tehran. Uh, it was on the coast, and they were business people. They loved to create businesses, and they didn't like government intervention into their businesses. And um, I won't say they liked the Shah, but they preferred a non-religious theocracy uh, to a religious theocracy. And so I'm doubting they were religious. I, I do have a an aunt, my Zandoi, who uh, is practicing Muslim. Like she wears she wears hijab, you know, just the hair cover, not the niqab, not the face cover. She just wears the hair cover. Uh, and I've seen her pray and I've seen her prayer rug and her little prayer. My sister does that thing. though too, man. My Sufi sister, white chick born yeah. in you know, like if you looked at wasp in the dictionary, there'd be a picture of her and me. Yeah. And you know that that's good to bring up too because <laughs> Some idiots like, um, well, Jack, Jack, uh, Ber Berkman. Can we say Berkman. that? Can we say that now? Mr. Berkman, Mr. Burke wearing man. Uh, he was under the impression that, <laughs> it, that it's always, that, that it's so always so forced that, that, that there's no woman who does it voluntarily and they're all forced into it and men beat them if they don't wear their hair cover. But, uh, no, uh, my aunt who wore the head cover, uh, her husband didn't give a crap about religion. It's cultural. He, he drank. He drank booze. Like the first time I drank liquor was probably Ooh. visiting them. He he drank whiskey and gambled. And and every time I'd visit, they'd be watching football, not because they enjoyed the sport, but just so they could gamble on it. Playing poker at the same time. That's how I learned all the card games I know and how to gamble. And drinking whiskey. And he didn't give a crap about no religion. But his wife was devout in it. And she wore the the hair thing, and and they got along fine. Like he didn't hold any grudge against her for being religious, and she didn't hold any grudge against him for drinking whiskey. They got along like normal people Visky. do. Pe people are normal, man. Russian or German? Is it how Iranians, Visky. Iranians, Iranians, Persians say it? The Persians I know, but the Persians I know, like I said, they're they're up along the Caspian coast, so they do have some Russian influence. The too. Caspian ghost. Caspian, the Caspian Sea. I heard you. I heard you, man. Which I'm is trying a to be sea, funny. but I'm not I funny. I don't know, man. I don't like it to be a sea because. Hey, the government like... promised the world won't end on December 21st. They, they oh, yeah. issued a statement. I, saw that. I feel better. Dude, you know, that is so really... specious and godlike. Like, I don't think the world's going to end on December 21st, but how can the government declare that it won't? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, everything they do is specious. They also say that NORAD keeps Santa safe while he's delivering his <laughs> presents across the world to little kids. <laughs> Boy, what a weird bit of horizontal enforcement. And they've been doing that since the 60s or 70s, man. When I was a mm -hmm, kid, mm -hmm. they'd do it on TV. Now it's on yeah. the internet. Yeah. Uh, the other, maybe maybe they issued a statement about uh, the scary rumors about the world ending or just rumors because they want to make sure they get an agreement on the fiscal cliff. <laughs> Yeah, there you They're go. They're like, oh, well, well we have, to, we have to come up with some yeah. kind of agreement because the world's not going to end. I uh, think it's racist for them to declare that it won't work, it won't end, because they're saying they're like, the, Mayans the Mayans are wrong, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, That's there's racist. things like... There's things like the Mayans didn't incorporate leap years, so it really wouldn't be the time people think it is anyway, and whatever, man. So PGP encryption certification, the you know your cert, your your private key, your public key. If you don't change the date on this, it automatically um, becomes invalid in five years. Okay. But I was okay. thinking, in five years, I think encryption is either going to be everywhere by default or illegal. Or there'll Which be a better way of doing it, especially if it is illegal. There'll probably be a better, more anonymous way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I would hope. Uh, I would. I would imagine at least. Pigeons. Instead of using pigeon, we'll be using actual pigeons to send actual messages. pigeons. Yeah. 
it took a long time from for, for me to talk to Hero in Germany over there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, the, here's the thing. I I'm kind of disappointed in all my anarcho capitalist anarcho capitalist friends, my freedom fiends. We call them now. That's the uh-huh. word we use. Freedom fiends. Small f. Small f. Um, because the other day I posted two things in a row. One was this link to the blog post that me and four other people worked on. You know, we probably put 40 man hours into writing and testing and vetting and proofreading and improving this. Mm-hmm. And I made the really cool picture of Cartman holding the envelope while dressed as the cop. Did yeah. you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> and I looked hard. I looked for the right envelope. I got an old timey envelope written in script. Um, I posted that and like five people clicked like on it and nobody forwarded it. Um, I posted a couple minutes well, why, later. Why would people who are into privacy and encryption want to like things about proving that they're into? <laughs> that's a good point. But privacy why, and encryption. That's a really good point. At which is, you know, what some of, what I wrote in defense on Wikipedia when they tried to take down Boston Tea Party's, um, you know, page, uh, the page about him on there, saying that he wasn't notable because there wasn't a lot about him on the internet. And I said he intentionally he writes books on how to stay off the internet literally yeah, yeah, you know right. um and the books are readily available like at gun shows and you know in the gun culture he's a rock star so he is notable and it stayed up because of me doing that and uh, yeah. another guy defending him and citing things okay. so okay yeah there is that but i also put something up about uh it was about the drone blocker guy the dr- the guy who's putting up the new in new york city he was putting up oh like Sam. Yeah, talk about that. Well, before yeah. you do, there was this. It was it was a tyranny. It was a tyranny today, and I put that up, and it got like fifty six likes and ten shares. In in and it really disappointed me though, because I think aside from your yeah, I mean the real privacy people aren't even on Facebook, obviously. But you know, here's what I think. I think most people would rather sit around bitching about tyranny and forwarding tyranny to other people and going, look at this horrible tyranny, than than doing something that would take about an hour or two to set up that is a defense against tyranny, which is PGP email. You know, literally, literally, like you can cock block the state in whatever country you're in sitting at your computer right now in the time it would take you to, you know, basically do the dad spam equivalent, the anarcho-capitalist equivalent of dad spam, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. clicking like and forwarding some tyranny on Facebook. So I'm kind of disappointed in the people who don't do that. And I've got it set up and I'm going to do a post soon on how to set up um, uh, uh, OTR off the record uh, instant messaging with Pigeon, which um, someone who's listening taught me how to do, but I'm not going to say who it is because he might not want people to know because he's that kind of guy. He's a guy that doesn't even use email, uh, which is a lot of the real like heavy duty white hat hackers don't. They use IM, which is even better because when you use encrypted email, you know, it's, it's safe going from point A to point B, but it's on your computer, and if you don't delete your messages, and even if you do and don't shred them and overwrite them, if someone gets physical access to your computer or your keys or can get in or hold a gun to your head and make you uh, type it in, your emails are all going to be there. Whereas mm-hmm. with off-the-record instant messenger, it's not asynchronous in time. It's two guys sit and talk to each other, two people sit and talking to each other, and as soon as you close that window, it is gone. There's no record of it anywhere in the universe gone in any way that's readable. Ever. And the, yeah. and and while it's happening, it's encrypted and unbreakable. So yeah, there. Yeah. I, su- I suppose I suppose if they were key logging you, they would know what you were typing. Yeah, which is why I have cameras in my house. So uh, uploading to somewhere they can't find. Well, they probably could. They could probably do that and then put the loop on of like previous dates and change the dates, but. It would take a lot of effort and um well here here's the thing it, it's the tiny dot thing just extrapolated into technology right if everybody is making it hard for the feds uh to tyrannize us through these electronic spying means then it's a lot harder for them to break us uh if if just michael dean is doing it then it's pretty easy for them um since there's so many people out there who aren't part of the state apparatus if we all did it the state can't keep up with us and they can't fight us all off the same thing's true with using a vpn too if you're the only person in your geographic area using a vpn Uh it's going to set off some you know they can't read what you're looking at or see what you're looking at or read what you're saying but they're going to go okay this one guy in 
beast lick Wyoming is using this and no one, none of his neighbors are what's going on here. But if you can convince all your neighbors that they should be using it to share their dad's bam and cute cat pictures, then it's an accepted thing, you know, and in, it's actually, it's a lot more common, not just per square mile in urban areas and hip areas, but per per capita too. You know, I'm sure there's a lot more people yeah. per capita in Austin. If you took five, you know, Wyoming is 550,000 people. If you took in Wyoming, there's probably a couple hundred people using encrypted email and VPNs. And out of that same number of people around Austin or San Francisco, around San Francisco, there are probably tens, if not hundreds of that. I mean, there's so many corporations that use it. There's so many people that use it. There's so many hackers that use it. So many dot com millionaires who got out in time and sit around getting blown by supermodels and doing uh <laughs> coca drill and cranny tranny hookers all day long. Coca Actually, if they're millionaires, they're probably not doing coca drill. They're coca drilling them though. Yeah, they are. <laughs> totally. Um, coca drill. Yeah, yeah. So do that thing. That do is, that thing. Privacy. Yeah. So do here's it. here's do the it. recommendations for action items for fiends. Um, action items. Get a VPN. We recommend Bola VPN. Um, there's another one we may recommend at some point in the future. Uh, we need to talk to them more. But Bola VPN. There's a link on our site. Go check them out. Uh, use encrypted email. There is a post on the Freedom Fiends blog, a couple posts down on using PGP and setting it up, and it works. And you can write me, and Nima will eventually get around to uh, doing it. <laughs> and my there's a link to my key and the email address I use for it on there. Torrent the hell out of the Fiends. Every time you torrent or use a VPN or use encrypted email, the state dies a little bit and just shrinks and goes, meh, until the point where... It is so unwanted, it will drown itself in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you <laughs> it won't drown itself because nobody doesn't like nobody it. Nobody likes me. <laughs> nobody supports me and gives me things. You know, the thing I think about the state, I, I'm off, I often think about that, uh, that Simpsons episode called Last Exit to Springfield, the uh, union one, the union going on strike one, mm. which is based on, very roughly, on Last Exit to Brooklyn, written by... Uh -huh. Hubert Selby Jr., the guy I did a documentary on that uh, the DVD torrent from uh, Hero's Seed Box, Hero and My Seed Box, was being um, torrented simultaneously by both uh, United Arab Emirates and Israel today. So the fiends are causing peace in the Middle East. And that's another thing why you should torrent us and be seeders and have the RSS feed. But in that episode, Last Exit to Springfield, they decide to make Homer the new head of the union. And they're all like, woohoo, and hoisting him up on their shoulders and drinking beer. And, and, and Homer goes, how much does this job pay? And they go, nothing. And he goes, do. And then they, and then they say, and then they say, unless you're crooked. And he goes, woohoo, <laughs> which is kind of what I think of people getting into the government. I mean, even if, yeah. even from a minarchist standpoint, if you're like, I'm going to go in and be a good guy and shake things up. If you're not Ron Paul, and he's the only guy who's avoided it. If you're anybody else and you go into government, someone is going to come up to you with a giant sack of money and say, here, have a present. Okay, now mm -hmm. do something you wouldn't have done otherwise. And very few people who go to the, the trouble to get into government are going to be able to say no to that. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I don't know that I would say no to that, man. I mean... <laughs> And, and I'm sure they have they have parents like that, but I'm sure they have sticks too. Yeah, like uh, like we'll we know where family. you sleep at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's it's best to just avoid it all. And and yeah, Michael, you say you wouldn't, but you don't know that until you're there. So really, the best thing is to just avoid avoid a, being in a situation where where you can be corrupted. Right? That's what we all need to do. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking at uh, Google satellite images of my dad's hometown, and the the street. Dude, that's gonna get you drone if you're looking at Iran on fucking Google Earth. Why? That's what the drones do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's really bizarre to me that Google Earth is allowed because yeah, all that yeah. kind of shit in much lower resolution when they started doing that in the 60s and 70s like in the 70s that was classified information like a satellite photo of any part of the earth yeah. only the go only governments had that yeah yeah it's really bizarre to me that that i don't know how or why that got out and actually 
Originally, Google Earth was accessible only through something called like Google Keyhole or something. Do you remember that? You had to download a program. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, now you just go to Google Maps and there's yeah, a uh, yeah. button you click for satellite image. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. But uh, the, the main street, uh, east to west street, I guess it runs maybe along the coast or something because it looks like maybe it's kind of a, not an interstate, an interprovince, an intersatrap. <laughs> um, intersatrap. <laughs> It's called Imam Khomeini, so it means you know the religious leader Khomeini is is it's named after him. Uh, that's sad. Hmm. I feel sad for them. Hmm. Why they come in and name it after the Imam Khomeini? Oh, this is sweet. I have something to end on, and we're we're ending today. We're ending. Um, we will be ended. <clears throat> Somebody said, my dad spams me. Or somebody else said, my dad sent me a text once. It wasn't even a complete sentence. Um, this is kind of sad, but it's kind of beautiful. Uh, when my mother was dying of cancer, my sister and I chipped in and got her this thing. It was like 100 bucks. It was basically a grandma where um, utility for people that couldn't use computers to be able to send email. And my sister set her up an email address. And <laughs> I'm going to cry, man. My mother sent me one email and she said, I love you and I'm proud you're my son. And she died like two days later mm. and uh she was a really cool lady and she's a, i'll just i'll have some like redemption in third act she is she and my dad really i mean i they're, they're hella square in their own weird way and my dad's still around i love him and there's an interview we did with him and it's great but they both influenced me a lot to uh be what i am they both had a really intense work ethic they both had a really intense honesty ethic and, you know, I took what was true and left the rest, you know, the kind of square Republican mm-hmm. statist, whatever, you know, yeah. don't take drugs and don't bang tranny hookers kind of thing. Right. Um, and, you know, I want to thank them for uh, for helping me become what I am and yeah. in all the good ways and none of the bad ways. <laughs> <laughs> nice redemption. Cool. So you can play right. the outro, brother man? Yeah, we'll play the outro. And, uh, cool. You fiends can ponder on the wonders of finitude that we have shared with you today. Yeah. Worms. We're not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the freedom fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on the post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Thank you for listening to the Freedom Fiends Agenda. We'll be back streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast U.S. time on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. MP3 archives of all Freedom Fiends episodes are available free at freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Worms!